I had been, you know, even when I was director of the art center, uh, in the, you know, from fifty to sixty, uh, nineteen. I was director nineteen fifty seven to nineteen sixty six. I was really not terribly interested in avant garde art. Um, why abstraction? I just I felt because of a lot of reading and, and serious thinking that that using the figure or or doing landscape or still life, that which was largely antithetical to abstraction, was largely telling a story. It was more literary than it was aesthetic. And I felt that an abstraction could get me into an area where I was really dealing with what art really was. Aside from the fact that I really believed that it was a kind of a exploration that was psychological, that was, was trying to, to develop a authenticity and an honesty and an identity. And I don't think I could achieve an identity in doing the figurative a portrait, for example, uh, as I could in abstraction, uh, it, it gets very, very complicated because it's more, it, it's, it's something that was a, was a trip that took place over a, a long period of time and, uh, and thus it's hard to recount specifically, you know, why certain things happen. For example, I can look back at my work and know that I went through several stages. And to me, those the shift in focus from one thing to another, including experimenting modestly and conservatively, I was never really flamboyantly excessive as, as other people have been. The changes I made were slowly incremental. Uh, and um, and that, of course, is a reflection of, you know, my personality, uh, and and what I was trying to do was, without my conscious knowledge, uh, my rational knowledge, my control, was something that was evolutionary. In other words, it it just simply came about through just the act of, of doing a lot of work, which is, I think, significant for me that uh, among the things that I hold to be very important uh, for any truly serious uh, producing image maker is, is that there has to be a commitment that um, involves a great deal of mileage, a great deal of work. I feel, and I've said this in teaching, and I've said it to myself frequently, that you get quality, and that's very difficult to define, but, but I think I can feel that intuitively. You get quality out of quantity, that you have to do a lot. Doing one or two things may be uh, gratifying to you know the less experienced, uh, but to someone that is really committed uh, to to exploring deeply, I think you have to be committed to a lot of work. Of you know Kafka had a great aphorism: "If you want to be creative, then the two things you have to avoid is impatience and laziness." Um, and um, Arshal Gorky, who was a great artist, who unfortunately had a relatively short life, was a great abstract expressionist. Um, he, um, he said, you have to work all the time, even when you're sick. And I think that that's something that uh, is very important for me. I may be starting to ramble a little bit about what this is, but but there's an aspect to what I do that is not, does not have the capacity to be pinned down 
either verbally or, or even systematically. It's, it's, it's a matter of reflecting a certain attitude about life itself, that it's unpredictable and it's uncertain. And another thing that, that uh, I discovered years ago that Bertrand Russell said, which I hold important and dear, is that uh, life is a matter of, of uh, dealing with uncertainty, but without hesitancy. And I think a lot of what I do, what is reflected in my work, is loaded with doubt and failure and, uh, and just something that, um, that is uncertain. I don't know what's going to come up next. And I think what, one of the things that, that prompts me is, is maybe curiosity. Uh, to, to not know what might be lurking there in whatever I do. And that helps me to do things that might be, um, you know, uh, swinging the pendulum. You try this, and then you try that, and you try this, and you try that, and, you know, you overcompensate, and you, 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 you don't follow. You, at least I feel you can't follow rules that have been set for you. I realized that a lot of the stuff that I had been trained to do, conditioned to do, uh, were, were sort of rules, and that that was not a way to be liberated in what I think is truly uh, producing a viable image, an image that reflects a uniqueness. Look, every artist is idiosyncratic and peculiar to themselves, the way everybody is in their own body, their own muscle, their own skin. And I think that the artist has to face the challenge of, of achieving, I think, an image that has that special identity so that people can look at it and say, oh, that's Harold Zisla. Not necessarily, oh, that's beautiful or that's great, but identify, like you say, when you walk into a gallery or museum and you say, oh, Picasso or Rembrandt or Toulouse-Lautrec or whoever, those are the people that have achieved that image. But the vast, vast number of works of visual art never get to that level. I think it's pretty obvious that you can look at, as I have, at hundreds of works of art and they just don't have that presence of a unique spirit that may not be identifiable verbally, but that is there. It may be solipsistic. It may have a certain kind of, of a taint of too much ego, but it's absolutely necessary to seek that authenticity, that individual mark that, that is Harold Zisla. And that really has been really a life goal for me. And that was the big break. Not necessarily a break toward abstraction in my 50s, but, but wanting to leave something that people can identify with me and with no one else. That's extremely important. Um, you know, I've gone through a lot of other things like setting up exhibitions of other artists when I was director of the Art Center and uh, judging, you know, an, a large number of exhibitions of all kinds and, uh, and analyzing and evaluating a lot of student work. But I have been really much more self-critical than with any thing that someone else has done. Um, I, I may look at it and, and have maybe not the, the, the most positive feeling about the accomplishment of a particular artist, but, uh, but I'm much more critical with my own work. And I think it's that that has allowed me to, um, to continue to, uh, 
to push, and, and that I think is necessary. Uh, of course, you have to stop, you have to avoid certain conventional, traditional, cultural handicaps of seeking celebrity and defining success by uh, either notoriety or making money, uh, you know, or being having commendation or approbation or that kind of stuff. I think you just simply have to work for yourself in a kind of cocoon of being. Uh, and uh, I'm not smug about it, and I really uh, uh, don't care very much about what the audience might feel. I don't think you can. Uh, certainly other fields, like being an actor, you have to feel, you know, that the audience has to respond. But I don't feel that about the work that I do.